G'day team, welcome to another part of the UI deep dive. In this video, we're going to be going through the annotate ribbon. So the annotate ribbon is very important. The annotations are all of the supplementary information which the 3D model has. So it's stuff like dimensions, uh, text notes, tags, etc. It's a It's a very, very versatile ribbon. And I could probably spend well over an hour going through all the uh, all the little details and you know tips and tricks, but I'll keep it as an overview, and then I'll make some more specific videos at a later date, showing you some you know some really important and uh, really cool stuff. To be honest, first up, we're going to go through dimensions. So in the dimension part here, there's a few dimension styles, and there's a couple of spot tools. So the aligned dimension is what I will use. 19 times out of 20 when putting a dimension in. So an aligned dimension will go between two parallel points, or you can press tab to select the end point and dimension like that, or yeah, any number of things really. It's a, it's a really versatile tool, but it is like the straight aligned width between two points. Similar dimension is linear, but the difference between linear is linear is only going to go up and down. It's not going to go diagonally like this. So if we go linear, we're gonna go between here and here. It's only gonna give you that horizontal dimension or the vertical dimension. It's not going to give you the actual straight line dimension like the align tool was. So slight difference but aligned is gonna cover cover your bases a lot more often than linear will. Angular is pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to yeah, just give you the, the, the angle between two lines, so 45 degrees there. And that's between this one and that one. Diameter and arc length and uh, radial, once again, pretty self-explanatory. Radius is gonna give you the radius. Diameter is just gonna give you the diameter, believe it or not. And arc length, uh, this isn't one that I've used too often. I think it's the kind of thing that you'd need for some like wacky building that you're gonna draw as part of your architecture degree that's never gonna get built in real life. But uh, on the off chance that you're gonna be drawing a, uh, a real life building with some crazy curved walls, then yeah, go hard on this one. So the spot tools, I, I'm gonna make a video about spot elevations because that that is an incredible tool and a very misunderstood one and I have uh, I've worked out how to do some really cool stuff with spot elevations but essentially a spot elevation is just going to give you the height of a selected point in regards to one of the multiple I guess uh, parameters slash systems that Revit uses to dictate the project height so it's pretty much just saying this is 245 above uh, you know, the, the whatever level it was attached to. Spot coordinate, similar kind of deal. I don't use this one very often. I haven't haven't had the need, but it's there if I need it. And spot slope will tell you the uh, the the gradient of whatever surface. So when I drew this, I put a uh, put a slope arrow in there, so it's it's falling from in one direction. And uh, this is just going to give you the the slope. You can, as with all of these in edit type and then the unit format you can change what it actually is going to give you so it'll change it you know if it's a if it's a length you can change it from millimeters to feet and inches or centimeters or whatever um, with the with the slope tool here you can give it a like a one in ratio or a ratio against one or a percentage or even a um you know a degrees or rise there's there's a bunch of different uh unit options there Next up, we have the uh, the detail part of the ribbon. So detail lines are pretty much just whatever AutoCAD can do. It, it's just drawing standard detail lines. The difference between a detail line and a model line is a detail line is only going to show up in this view. You know, so you can draw all these boxes in here. But then if we go to our site plan, well, there's nothing there. If you draw a model line, which you can tell because they're always going to be green and then go back to your floor plan. 
you'll see those model lines are in there because a model line is like a 3D element as mentioned in a previous video. If, it, if Revit says something is model, it's gonna be like a 3D element and it's gonna show up everywhere. If it's detail, it's gonna show up in just this view. Now, if you want something that's a detail item to show up in multiple views, you can turn them into a group and then put that group on whatever sheets or views you need to and then they'll appear as they are wherever that group is visible. So there's two kinds of regions in, um, in Revit. There's a filled region and there's a masking region. A masking region is pretty much something that's just going to hide whatever is behind the masking region, like so, except for a detail item, it'll hide the 3D, 3D elements. A filled region is what you will just apply like a hatch pattern to. Both of these, you can change the line style to be whatever you want and then the filled region so whatever's going to show up in the middle of the filled region is totally up to you so we can just draw this out here and it's going to be whatever the fill pattern that was earth i will note too with detail lines the line style is something that can be controlled under manage then additional settings and then line styles so you can make mix and match whatever lines you want in here you can you can go new call it something fun and then you can change the line weight the line color and the line pattern now there's a heap of line patterns loaded into every job so you just have to find one which suits the uh suits whatever you need and then it's it's just going to be in there so a detail component is like a detail line it's a 2d element which could be you know like a rebar or smoke alarm or a batter bank whatever and it's only going to show up in that view because it's a detail component so it's the same deal as a detail line so you can put all these detail lines and detail components onto this view and it's not really going to affect the model at all because it's just they're just only restricted to this view specifically unless like i said they're in a detail group but same deal detail components are, are very handy Revision clouds. So, revision clouds are used in hand in hand with the revision schedule. It's something that some officers use, some officers don't. I don't have a whole world of experience using them. Um, it comes up with this really cool looking cloud, which you can then tag and then tie in with the actual revis revision schedule. I don't know why I can't say revision but the revision schedule, which is part of the title block. So, you know, if this was a revision regarding this little outdoor area, that uh, that might have another like a date. So it's revision B, amendment to the outdoor area. And then on the plan, they'll know that that cloud indicates that this is what's changed in revision B. The insulation tool is, uh, believe it or not, it's a tool for showing insulation. So the insulation is, is just a line based, kind of like a detail component, but it's just, yeah, it's just line based. You can change the width and uh, very handy for actually drawing in insulation. I remember seeing someone try to draw insulation in with like detail lines. They were trying to do like this kind of deal, manually drawing it in and it just would have taken a thousand years and just looks terrible. So don't do that, just, just do this for insulation. So the text tool, I could probably make an entire video just about the text tool and how it works and what it can and can't do. Uh, it's actually, it's a little bit complicated, but you can assign leaders, you can justify where the leaders are coming from and the justification of the text, whether it's center, left or right. And there's a bunch of different text styles that you can actually use and all of those things are controlled under the edit type slash the type properties. Have a play and just try and work out what text styles you like. There's a, there's no real right or wrong. It's all subject to taste, but yeah, these are text. Uh, text is an interesting, interesting tool. Rivet, believe it or not, has a check spelling tool, so that will uh, that will check the spelling of any text and let you know. But a lot of uh, a lot of what building designers and architects write down is abbreviations, and it's always going to have a field day with that kind of stuff. So a lot of people just stop using this and just try and do a good job the first time around. The find and replace tool is is fantastic for if you need to modify a, uh, a text note which is on multiple sheets but is not a group or a, a tag and needs to, you know, say you've got a pathway and they're wanting to change the, the finish of the pathway from exposed aggregate to, you know, 
broom finished concrete whatever you can then go in here say find whatever it is concrete in the entire project and then go find all and it's probably not going to find any because no one's typed any concrete in this one but it will find it in the entire project and then you can replace it with whatever you want and it's a really cool little tool to just save you a few minutes in there all right tags tags are tags are so important tagging in in revit is I, I do a lot of tags and i still think that i don't tag enough i think that if we could phase out text entirely that would just be like a a utopia that we live in but we're slowly getting there so tag by category is going to tag whatever you click on based on whatever that family is so this is going to place a window tag because it knows we've clicked on a window and it's got a window tag loaded in so we know if we go tag by category and then click on the window it wants us or we want to put in a window tag same deal with doors and components and anything else that you can possibly tag tag all is going to tag everything that is not already tagged so if you've just finished putting a big floor plan together and you want to go around and tag all of the doors and windows and everything else then you can use this and it's going to throw them all in and you can just tidy them up rather than go around and individually click on every single door and window so a multi-category tag is slightly different to the two tools I just just described. It's not a door tag or a window tag or a, you know, a plumbing tag, whatever. It's a tag which is going to attach to pretty much anything. And it's uh, based on a shared parameter. So say if you've got like a mark or a comment or a description, it's gonna bring up that information for anything that you tag. And it, it's, yeah, it's a pretty cool, it's pretty under underutilized tool, but, uh, but a pretty good one. Uh, material tag is obviously just going to tag the material finish of whatever you're tagging. Room tag is going to place a tag in the room. This is not to be confused with actually placing a room in a space. Um, this is just going to tag the room itself. View reference. This is not part of my workflow. I'm not 100% on this one. Tread number is going to label the treads of the staircase. So if you want some stair numbers in there, so it's gonna number them like that and whatever this little blue line is, so it's gonna tag it on that side or on kind of like this interior midway point, same here. So if we click there, then it's gonna tag it along that line. Pretty cool little tool, much better than putting in text notes for, um, for each number of the tread, which is just a pain. So I'll be open, on, open and honest again. These next two, I don't really use keynotes. Um, when I started making these videos, I, I really forced me to sat down or sit, fuck. Sitting down to make these videos has really forced me to look at my own Revit skills and knowledge through an absolute microscope. So keynote is one of the things that I have noticed that I, I don't understand well enough, certainly not well enough to teach or make a video about, and it's something that I will investigate personally, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll skip over this one for now because it's, uh, it's an interesting tool and I don't understand it well enough to waste everyone's time by possibly leading down the wrong path. Color Fill Legend is not part of my workflow, but it's, uh, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool little tool. Have a play around with that. Symbol is great if you're wanting to put in like it says like a north point or a scale um, a common use for symbol that I have is I hate the way that the center line text thing works so if we go up to text go to symbol go center line I think that that's just it's not big enough it rarely works uh, so I made my own symbol for center lines and it, it works a lot better than text and it's also quicker to put in because if it's just a symbol you just click and then and then place it and additionally with keyboard shortcuts, it's much quicker. Um, and stair path, this, uh, this tool is a bit, a bit fiddly. I just, I try not to use it. So, <laughs> all right. So that is a, a very quick overview of the annotate tab. I could, I could easily have spent an hour going through so much more detail, but like I said, I will, I'll make more specific videos about more specific things, which I think are more useful rather than just, 
um, drone on all in the one video. Uh, I hope you guys got something out of this video. And uh, as always, thank you very much for watching and I will uh, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.